View this video from the playlist to see the complete video content. In this chapter, I want to cover advanced maintenance of your UltraFeed sewing machine. Fortunately, UltraFeed machines are largely mechanical, and as such, it is perfectly reasonable to think in terms of maintaining and tuning your sewing machine all on your own. Let's talk about one of the first things you should look at when it comes to advanced maintenance, and that's needle bar height. The needle bar height has to do with how far down the needle goes into the hook mechanism. And if the needle bar doesn't go down the appropriate distance into the machine, it can't carry the thread down far enough to create the loop for the hook to pick up. And if the loop isn't in the proper position to be picked up, you will have a skip stitch. Skip stitches look like either an exceptionally long straight stitch where there's a hole without a thread knot in it, or a zigzag stitch that looks like a number of zigs and then perhaps long stitches on the left or the right hand side of that zigzag stitch, again, with holes that are punched in the fabric that do not have a thread knot in them. That is what we mean by a skip stitch, and when you have that happen, check the needle bar height. Notice that this is the needle bar. It is called the needle bar because the needle attaches to the needle bar. And the needle bar is attached to the machine via this pillow block with the set screw here. Or in the case of the LS1 machine, through this hole and into the side of the pillow block from here. You'll notice that the needle bar has a score line at the top. And that score line is a, is a mark that we put on the shaft in order to designate the proper setting position for the needle bar. So when the needle bar is all the way at the bottom of its travel, and you can tell that when this dog bone piece is perfectly vertical with the needle bar itself, that mark should be basically just buried uh, at this bearing surface, which you can see it is here now. So if I rotate any further, it starts to come up. And that designates the proper position for the needle bar if that position is not correct, you would need to loosen the pillow block either from here for the zigzag machine or from under the arm like we showed you a little bit ago for the LS1 machine. And then you can twist and move the bar up and down. So I'm just gonna do that here real quick on this machine. So I'm gonna loosen this. And you can see I can grab this bar. Notice how I'm able to move it up or down. So to reset it, if it was out of position, I would want this I would want to set the machine so that the mechanism is pushing the pillow block all the way down, which it is now, determined by this being vertical. And then I would want to lower this until my mark is just barely visible. And then I'm going to tighten this set screw and just snug it to begin with and then check it. I might need to go down just a hair further. and then snug it up and make sure when you're done that your, your needle is still oriented properly so that the groove of the needle is facing out to the left. Now, I'm not done though until I'm happy with it and then I really tighten this, this screw down or this set screw down. And you wanna tighten it until your Allen tool almost bends. You can see I'm bending it and putting quite a bit of pressure on it. I really want that one to be tight because we don't want the needle bar to slip um, when you're pounding through heavy material. And that is all there is to setting the needle bar. However, we should look down below and see why we're setting it this way, and we're gonna do that now. Notice on the UltraFeed LS1, we're using a flat head screwdriver, and we insert it here. Tilt the machine back, and once the machine is back, I'm gonna remove the slide plate here just so that we can see things a little bit easier. And now I'm going to remove, in order to see the needle bar height and how it interacts with the hook, I need to remove the bobbin case so we lift the finger like we've shown before. And now for the first time, I'm gonna show you how to remove the retaining ring. So these black clips simply swing or pivot away, one back and one forward, and then the retaining ring and the hook will both fall out. I'm gonna set my retaining ring aside and we're gonna look at our hook real quickly. The hook, uh, it has some very intricate shaping to it, and the part that we're most concerned about is the actual hook point, which is this very sharp point, not the two 
lower dull points, but the actual sharp one on the outer perimeter of the hook. That is the part that picks up the thread loop to create the stitch. And that's the part that interacts with the needle. So if I put the hook in the machine, I'm gonna try and keep my head out of the way here, and I rotate the flywheel so that the needle goes all the way down, and that would be the point where our, our score mark is, as we noted a little bit ago, all the way buried here below this surface. Now if I rotate so that the hook point just barely peeks out at the front surface of the needle, what I should see is I should see that the eye of the needle is below the bottom edge of the hook point, and I should just barely be able to see the hook point peeking out forward of the needle. And hopefully you can see that in the video there. That designates that the needle bar height is correct. If the needle bar height was not in that position, then the hook point could not pick up the loop of thread or that is, is created on the upstroke of the needle as the hook swings by the needle. So uh, it's very important that the needle bar height is set so that the orientation looks like this when the hook swings by. Okay, I'm gonna rotate this around so you can see it again in a fresh rotation. And notice that I'm having to hold my finger on the side of the hook and I need to do that because otherwise it'll fall out on me. And now the, the hook is going back and here, watch it swing forward, and you can see it would catch the loop. And then as it goes around, then it would carry the thread around, dump it off the bottom, which I don't have thread in here, so you can't see that, but that's what it would be doing, and so forth. You can see here we are going back again, back behind, and now it would catch the loop, and so on. Now, if the score mark on the needle bar appears to be in the correct position, and yet down below you're not seeing what we've just shown, then that could mean that your driver rotation is out of adjustment and you should watch that segment which is coming up here shortly before you make any changes to the needle bar that take it off of the score mark setting.